Hi everybody, my name is Anibal Azevedo and now we're gonna start the track number five about how we can use, how we can apply artificial intelligence techniques to build a better operations in a container port uh, supply chain. And it's important to say that this first class will be very important since we're gonna uh, show the connection of this track with previously tracks on this team and also i would like to show a brief overview of what we're gonna uh, say what we're gonna do in this track number five also we're gonna use a different approach from previously track on previous tracks we build a uh, step-by-step uh, algorithms and let the algorithms in the description of the, of the video we will do the same thing here but we're gonna get just an overview of the algorithm. We're gonna say in a, a high level what's the algorithm function or what the algorithm do, and let you uh, explore uh, the algorithm to to uh, to use to explore and show just some features of the algorithm instead of describe in each detail. So let's start now this uh, this track. This the first class of this track. And, and show the connection of this track with previously, with previously tracks. So uh, what's important now is that uh, we are building a sequence of classes and tracks that which objective is to build a program, artificial intelligence uh, based program, which uh, will try to solve, will try to help the supply chain logistic crisis this is the motivation this is the objective uh, behind our videos so in the first track we talk about uh what we we saw in the first track we saw just the uh, application of how we can represent the container ship the container ship has a very very interesting uh, structure since you can divide in cells in, in squares the space of the container ship and uh, we use it this feature to uh, to understand or to build the class but before uh, i de describe the class in in a very very short uh, way uh, it's important to say that you, you can divide the ship in base so this layer here is a bay this another lay of containers is a, another bay and also each bay uh, the containers are organized in stacks so this is special structure this regular structure will be uh, very very simple represented here so we we'll we build a container ship class and what is the most important thing is that class you can represent this uh, stacks organization this bay organization of the ship and here we have a very brief uh, a short description of this okay so you can saw in the description of this video the link to the tracks also uh, cards will be up appear will appear during this video if you want to see in details uh, how to code this also what we saw in the second track uh, in the second track we saw that we can made some uh, container ship operations and uh, when a ship arrives in a port you are interested you can do you can perform two uh, operations L unloading you can unload you can remove containers from the ship and put in the yard the uh, the, the port or you can uh, transfer from the yard to the container ship uh, using some loading rules uh, what we are calling loading and loading rules the way that we can organize containers inside a container ship so here we can define this we made this in the second track and also it's important to say that this unloading or loading rules can produce different patterns or how to organize how to put container inside a container ship so here for example in this uh this part we have uh, applied a rule 
uh, which objective is to just to minimize the number of movements, but without uh, without uh, caring about the the stability of the ship, and we have a, 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 a very reduced number of uh, number of movements, but it's not good in terms of st stability. This is the contrary here, and why is the contrary? Because we are seeing just the stability. We don't care about the number of movements. We have a great stability uh, pattern here, but it's not good for uh, in terms of economical terms. So uh, also we can produce different kinds of unloading rules. We can uh, remove all containers from the container ship just to organize the container ship or remove uh, these stacks that are not the uh, are uh, we have which we have some blocking containers blocking containers are you are trying to remove the yellow container from the bottom of the ship but this orange container is not allowed in this so you can you should remove also the orange container but we have other kinds of rules which means that we can uh, we are trying to organize uh, the ship to improve the space and avoid uh, to have more blocking containers in the future ports. So we coded this uh, in detail, very very detail in this track. So uh, we, oh, it's also important this because in the future in a future track we're gonna say we're gonna show how we can avoid this manually coding of rules. You can avoid this. This boring and manually coding rules can be avoided. Okay, we're gonna show in the future track. Okay, so in the third track, we talked about uh, about what? Okay, we have the sh container ship. We have, have unloading loading rules. Uh, uh, we can combine them uh, in in a simulation. Okay, so how you can combine them? We can say which kind of rule will be applied in each port. So, for example, we imagine that we we are using the ship in the first port. We determine that we should use this uh, the rule number three, which means that we should use, for example, the unloading rule, unloading rule number uh, two, and the loading rule, loading rule. Just an example, okay one or two maybe two depending on how you can translate this integer number in terms of unloading and loading rules so we can we built this encoding the coding process uh to to get a very small a very smart encoding decoding and this is important since we, it's very easy and compact representation of the solution and we can apply this solution and see how many movements we should use through a container port uh, uh, during a travel, during its travel through ports. So uh, here we have uh, a representation. What's more, most important here, after doing this, we can uh, obtain, we can co compute the total number of movements. So after performing this loading and loading uh, operations, we can get the total number of movements, number of movements. Okay, it's not my letter here is not good, but I hope you understand this. So uh, what's important? We can apply in each port the unloading and loading operations. So we can obviously we can improve the level of details, but at this first moment we're gonna uh, show just uh, this. We we're gonna care about just how the containers are organized inside a container ship. Uh, but obviously we can improve it, we can see uh, the, uh, how many quake cranes operate, how they operate, or how the ver vehicles cooperate with the quake cranes, or how the, the space in the yard, uh, uh, where are the uh, empty spaces in the yard, or where we should put the containers. We, we can increase the level of the description of this since we are applying just a discrete event simulation okay so this is a very simplified way instead of using a complex design uh, simulation we just 
uh, care about the t time of computation because we we uh, we can count uh, the number of movements in a very very fast way by applying this. We only have to care about which kind of simulation, which kind of room we are applying, which is here. Okay, this is the parameter, and uh, also we can compute the total time, but not at this time because to compute the total time we have to uh, care about cranes how much time we're going to spend how the cranes operate so this is important uh, that we will remember that we should in, uh, uh, consider also the quake cranes if we are trying to compute the total time and the total number of movements the total number of movements can get uh, we can uh, at this moment we can extract but not uh, but before it is it's important to say in the track number four we have this uh, imagine that we have several combinations of rules since we, we get this for example in the the first part we can apply rule two or three or four and I don't know depends of how many combinations of unloading and loading rules we have we can also consider this uh, the yard storage or the, how to operate the quake cranes and this number of combinations of rules for each port can increase can increase exponentially so to avoid this exponential computation we can uh, use a genetic algorithm that we developed in this track number four and you will say that each uh, line of a matrix or a list of lists is just uh, uh, an individual. As you can see here, this first line is an individual. This another line is uh, another individual. And each individual has uh, uh, his, its business, which is about number of movements or total time or any other kind of objective function that you are care about so uh, imagine that now we can evaluate these individuals by doing a simulation okay and using the, the rules the respective uh, rules so we start randomly the solutions evaluating them and applying some genetic uh, operators like uh, mutation uh, reproduction selection uh, crossover mutation until we find some uh, iteration steps and then we get the best uh, each time we perform this uh, iteration we get the best until we find the the stopping criteria and get the the best of the series of individuals and in generations so we can start randomly with a very poor quality solution until we get a high quality solution so we we can uh, also uh, see this in a more detail it's important to, to use uh, during this process the decoder which means we gonna use an integer number and this integer number will will be translated in terms of for example unloading and loading rules or any other rules that we can uh, include since we can include for example quake cranes here okay so we're gonna include quake cranes in the the simulation we're gonna include quake crane rules also and this is uh we can include more equipments or more detail of your uh environment so uh this is exactly what we're gonna do in this track number five we're gonna use quake cranes so what's the the overview that we're gonna get here? Uh, okay, uh, Quake Cranes has a specific way to to operate, it, so you can uh, uh, we can fix the number of Quake Cranes. This can be also a variable, but we're gonna use a very simplified version. Uh, just we are trying to prove that uh, that this approach. Is feasible and can be applied in a very very simple way so here we have fixed the number of quake, uh, quake cranes but it this can be also a variable 
And uh, once you determine the number of quake cranes, what's important? For example, we have to keep a minimal distance between quake cranes. This quake crane is a very, very big, large structure. So this quake crane cannot uh, overpass this another quake crane. Since they are rail mounted, they are giant structures like buildings. <laughs> you can see that uh, they, they cannot overpass each one. And you, your model should consider this. So what we done here in this uh, track number five is to show uh, how you can create some rules and your rule just gonna care about where the quake crane start in the first bay, in the last bay, which is the position of starting a quake crane in a, uh, in a ship. And all other things, uh, for example, in the first time here, in the time zero of this simulation, uh, uh, they started to, to remove or to, lo to load or unload the cargo from the ship. And in the time one, this quake, uh, this quake crane uh, is just, just don't have uh, more uh, work to do. So uh, they, this quake crane can move to here. Uh, but once this quake crane moved to to this bay. This quake crane cannot be moved because the, uh, we should keep this minimum distance. So uh, we have a difficult situation here since you have to keep this minimal distance. But uh, this quake crane cannot move. This another quake crane cannot move. Also, this uh, could increase the total time, and we're gonna see how to deal with this kind of situation in a very simple way. So thank you for your attention. I hope you find this video interesting and useful. And in the next videos, we're gonna show in detail uh, in a very top-down approach, which means we're gonna see the, the purpose of the code and we're gonna uh, say in a very sh short uh, way, in simple way, how this code operate. We're gonna perform some tests and it's will to be, I believe that's a uh, way will be more interesting uh, since this is a short code and uh, easy code to test. But what is most interesting, you're going to understand what is behind the code, not build each step by step, but you're going to understand what's behind the code and can use it for your purpose. So that's it. Thank you and see you in the next class of this track. See you. Bye.